around Kenya and I'm so excited to be going abroad for the first time since 2019. That was the last time I went away to Cuba and I have missed traveling so much. So I'm going on a work trip with my amazing friends from the company Origin Africa who are a not-for-profit clothing brand. Um, I'm wearing their jumper now but they are incredible. They donate all their profits to projects in Africa and all their clothes are sustainable and eco-friendly and they're just amazing and I'm so excited after working with them for a couple of years helping with social media and content creation to actually go out and see all the stuff we've been working on. I don't want to give away too much because it's their big sort of announcement after this trip so I would definitely recommend that you give them a follow. I'll pop a link to all their sort of website and everything in the description below but they're just such an amazing company and I'm so excited to be working with them and to be going on this trip. For those who don't really know me, I have always been obsessed with Africa, particularly East Africa. I just, it's just such a magical, amazing country and I'm so excited. Oh, I'm almost emotional talking about it, to be going out there again. Um, the last time I went to Kenya was about 15 years ago. And obviously my experience of traveling with celiac disease has changed a lot since then. So when I went out to Kenya initially, I was kind of in that like rebellious stage of celiac. I don't know if anyone can relate to that, but you know when you're just a bit like, oh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, you kind of wing it. And I probably ate things I shouldn't have done. I mean, to be fair, the diet out there is pretty like, although they're not probably that clued up on gluten-free and I don't really know how prevalent celiac disease is or how well known it is out there. A lot of the food that they eat naturally is actually gluten free, so things like rice, um, matoki, which is like green bananas, um, they taste a bit like potato, sounds weird, they're actually really nice, um, plantain, corn, maize, all this stuff uh, is all naturally gluten free anyway. So the problem tends to come when they try to cater for Westerners because they try to make things like pizza and pasta and obviously that's not good for me. So. I'm going to be trying to live a kind of like authentic Kenyan diet I guess while I'm out there but one of the big things of traveling to a country like Kenya is not being able to kind of plan in advance like if I was going away to a European city or America or somewhere like that it's very easy to contact places explain about sea disease beforehand normally they know what it is they have some knowledge and they'll be able to kind of cater for you or tell you if they can't so going somewhere like Kenya, I wanted to be prepared and it's kind of just reminded me that when you go abroad as a celiac, you do have to plan in advance and you do have to prepare and you can't just kind of wing it. So one of the things that I'm doing is I've contacted all the hotels in advance that we're staying at and actually one of them I've read on TripAdvisor was really good for gluten free previously with guests. So. I'm feeling optimistic about that and they got back to me really quickly and said that's fine and it will be taken care of so hopefully I'll be okay there and that's where we're staying for the main part of our trip but we will be visiting some more remote places and I want to make sure that if food is a bit kind of not scarce but if there's not a lot of choice then at least I know that I have some stuff like for backup so I thought I'd show you the stuff that I'm taking with me. Hopefully this will give you some kind of inspiration as to if you're traveling abroad, maybe some like emergency snacks and backups that you can take with you. So let me show you what I've got in my suitcase. So I actually asked you guys on Instagram what you thought would be good things to take because I was feeling a little bit like I didn't want to just load up on loads of sugary things because I find that when I go abroad, if I take snacks with me, I end up just eating like cereal bars and biscuits all the time that I've brought with me while everyone else is eating food. And I don't really want that. Like I find, I don't know about anyone else's celiac disease, but I get cold sores really badly that are triggered by the sun, but they're also quite highly triggered when I eat a lot of sugar. So I don't want to eat a lot of sugar because I'm already going to be fighting a losing battle with the sun anyway. So I just wanted to make sure that I could kind of have some healthy-ish snacks. I know it's difficult because a lot of the sort of pre-packaged easy food does tend to be sweet. But I've kind of tried my best. I mean mainly what I have is sweet stuff. But this is what I've got anyway. So the first thing I decided to stock up on was protein shakes. Now I do love a protein shake and I normally have them after the gym. But... 
I was trying to think of things that would make me feel full that might be slightly more nutritionally valuable than say like a cereal bar and I thought protein shakes would be a good idea. Now I bought these off of the My Protein website and it's actually a selection box because everything comes in these individual sachets. So these are whey protein shakes and they're all gluten free. I had a look on the site and there's no may contain, some of them do have um, malt extract in so those ones I'll be giving to Steve. But most of the flavours are fine and ironically the one I picked up just now does have malt extract but I think it's the only one. So there's quite a mixture of flavours in here. So I've got things like, I've um, got chocolate, I've got golden syrup which sounds very sweet. Um, I've got blueberry cheesecake, another blueberry cheesecake, chocolate mint. The latte one is not gluten free but that's fine. I can give that to Steve because I know he'll like it and be happy I'm leaving him a treat. So yeah, there's lots, it's a bit of a random selection. So you could get a big bag, but I thought these would be really handy because I could take a couple of these sachets maybe on the plane in my hand luggage. Um, and then the rest I can kind of just like shove into various cracks in my suitcase wherever they'll fit. But if you're bringing a protein shake, don't forget a protein shaker because I know if I shake these up in a bottle or they're so lumpy and it's just, it's not good. So I'm taking a shaker and this has got one of these wire balls in it. So it just stops um, it getting too lumpy. And actually I could probably shove a load of these in here. So one thing I will say is we have requested gluten-free meals on our flight. However, we had to make some last minute changes and now they're saying that we might not be able to request those meals. So I'm gonna take this shaker bottle, not the water, cause I can get that on the plane, um, and a couple of these protein shakes with me, as well as like some pre-made lunch. I'll probably film that as my next video, so I won't bore you with that now, but that will be to come and we can just keep our fingers crossed that I'm gonna get some gluten-free food. Otherwise it's gonna be a very long eight hours. So as well as protein shakes, I've also got a couple of protein bars. Now, I bought these Misfits protein bars in Sainsbury's and I'll show you them now, if my camera would like to focus on them. Now, these are so good. There's a peanut butter one and I think there's a hazelnut one. Honestly, these are the best protein bars. Like, I don't normally like protein bars. I remember having a massive obsession with Quest bars at one stage, but now, I don't really like them. I don't like the taste that you get with some of them, but these are insanely good. They're all gluten free, they're plant based, they've got 15 grams of protein, and they've got like basically no sugar, but they just taste like a chocolate bar. Like, honestly, I have to stop myself eating all of these. I only got a couple because they're a bit pricier than the other things I bought, but I thought I might take them on the plane with me or they'd be a good kind of like backup treat, I guess. <clears throat> So my main concern when I'm out there really is breakfast because I think that we'll be able to kind of get dinners and lunches as we go and I'm more than happy to eat a lot of like fresh fruit and vegetables and rice. That's the kind of food that I love and that's kind of what I've eaten a lot of when I've been to Africa before. And I tend to eat vegetarian because whenever I've eaten meat I have not had some great experiences with that. So I think given that I have celiac and I have to be a bit more careful of like my gut anyway, I tend to just go for like kind of simple plain but good foods anything that you can peel or wash um avoiding things like salad if possible so yeah so breakfast is the one thing where i wanted to make sure i had something to start the day so someone suggested to me on instagram porridge saturdays and i was like oh my god that's such a good idea so i've got a box of these mama porridge sachets these are really good let me show you these so these are like an almond butter one. Oh my gosh, they're so good and salty caramel. They are delicious. So there's six sachets in here. I'll probably take them with me, but I'll probably take them out of the box. Um, and again, if we're staying somewhere where we've got like self-catering and I've got a kettle, I could easily fill these up. I might actually take one sachet on the plane as well. Because again, like if they forget my meal, but if I can have like a cup and some hot water, uh, I can make these. So they're gonna have those and I think it's just about having a backup. Like it sucks if they forget your food or if there's places you can't eat, but if you know you've prepared, like at least I know I'm not gonna starve. Like I might be a bit hungrier than everyone else, but I can actually eat some food and this is like relatively good for you. So porridge sachets are going in. And then for those mornings as well, when we're kind of on the go or, 
you know, we're getting up early and traveling or I don't fancy breakfast or that if we're staying somewhere more remote where we might not have hot water or clean water that we can access. Um, I got some chocolate chip breakfast bars from Asda. Now I thought these looked really nice. I always see people, the gluten eaters, eating this sort of thing and they seemed yummy. Um, you get four packs of three biscuits so they're individually packed which is really helpful when you're traveling. So again, I'll probably put some of these in my hand luggage and the rest will go in my suitcase. And also for snack bars, I got some Trek Protein Flapjacks. Now, now I know that there's definitely a protein theme with what I've ordered here, but I'm kind of going along the lines of trying to get foods that'll make me feel full, so I know the protein is gonna help to fill me up, rather than just having like a really sugary, carb-heavy cereal bar. And again, these tend to be like mostly lower sugar than the kind of standard cereal bars. These ones maybe not so much, but yeah, I thought these just sounded nice. Salted caramel, flapjacks, and again, they'll just be a kind of easy thing that's individually packed that I can have on the go. Now, another thing I thought I would take with me if I have enough room in my suitcase is some gluten-free bread and some gluten-free pasta. And my lovely friends at Javella have helped me out with this. I will pop a link to them down below because they do these amazing subscription boxes, which I honestly recommend if you are new to the disease. And you can also get like a prescription start pack if you've just been diagnosed. So I'll pop those links below for you. But basically they sent me a white loaf, a gluten-free white loaf. Now this is a long life bread and it's actually valid until the, or best before the 22nd of June. So I know this is gonna last me and I can pop this in my hand luggage. Hopefully it won't get too crushed, but these ones are pretty sturdy. And I'm also taking with me some toaster bags. Now, as we have a shared kitchen at home, I use these all the time. They're amazing if you have celiac disease and you live with people and you have to share toasters. You basically pop your bread in them, pop them in the toaster, and your toast won't get any crumbs on it. But these, I thought, would be brilliant for if we do stay at a hotel which has got like a kind of breakfast spread. They tend to have those toaster machines where the bread goes through and it's like crumb central. So I thought if I can't eat anything else, if I've got some bread, I can pop it in the toaster bag, pop it on there, and it should toast like the other toast, but not get crummy. That is my plan anyway. And again, I think if we're staying anywhere self-catering and they've got a toaster, I wouldn't want to risk what's been in there before and it's very likely to be gluten. So this will just make sure that I'm keeping all my food completely safe. Chivella have also sent me some pasta. So I've got a box of their fiber penne. I thought pasta would be another thing that's really easy to take with me. And again, if I can get hold of like fruit and veg, maybe not fruit and pasta, but if I can get hold of veg, I can make something with pasta. This is gonna depend on how much room I have left in my luggage once I put my clothes in. But I think this would be just quite handy to have as a backup plan. Again, if we're staying somewhere a bit more remote, if I can make my own pasta, then I think it's just gonna give me that peace of mind that what I'm eating is safe. So I think this is quite handy if you are traveling, especially if you know you're going somewhere self-catering, I definitely recommend taking something like this. And that, my friends, is my gluten-free food in my suitcase. I hope this is helpful. I'm not sure how much of this I will eat or how much of it I'll even need, but I'd rather take it with me and not eat it and then be able to like share it with my mates as like, a snack if we're you know hanging out in the evening then not take it and just be like hungry and miserable I've been there before and it's horrible and I just think it doesn't take up that much room it's so much easier to prepare and it's definitely given me peace of mind to know that I can take the stuff on the plane and that I will have something there if they don't have my meal so hopefully that will all go okay and I'm hoping in my next video that I'll be able to update you with that. Obviously, if I don't post, I don't know what the Wi-Fi is going to be like, so it may potentially be a little bit of a delay, but I will be vlogging my entire trip, and I can't wait to show you guys how I get on, what it's like in Kenya, what I eat, and what it's like there as a celiac, and I'm just so excited to go. So I'm going to go and actually try to fit all this stuff into my suitcase now, 
I'd love to know if you have any tips or things that you take with you in your traveling, anything that I might have missed that I can run into the shop and pick up tomorrow before I go because I'm pre-recording this video like two days before I fly. And yeah, next time I see you, hopefully I'll be in Kenya. Make sure you hit like if this video was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. I try and bring out a new vlog every Saturday and lots of recipe videos in between. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.